welcome to episode 106 of our Family Travel Australia series. This week we are bringing you a Kakadu special edition. Australia's largest national park and one of the most biodiverse environments on earth, this World Heritage listed region is a must do for your Australian travel itinerary. Brimming with wildlife from crocodiles to magnificent birds, wetlands, billabongs, waterfalls with secret swimming holes, ancient Aboriginal rock art and spectacular landscapes, you will fall in love with Kakadu. Plus, be sure to enter our ultimate feel-good giveaway valued at over $6,000. So keep watching on details for how to enter and good luck. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. <laughs> good afternoon, Jasper Rooney. How good is this? We are on the road again. So good. Four weeks we spent in Howard Springs. So amazing. So much yeah. to do up here in Darwin. So you can easily stop for that amount of time. Yeah. It was nice to just have a base though. Awesome. <sighs> really fantastic. Yeah. And of course, with our, our mini lockdown up here, which we are very thankful was so short, it did mean that we had to change a few plans, um, not only from our our schedule of uh, travel, but also some work, an upgrade that we're getting done to the van, which is super exciting, and that's now happening at the end of this week. Yeah. Which means we've only got three and a half days ahead of us for this next plan. Where yes. are we going, Jasper? We are going to Kakadu! Kakadu, woohoo, all right. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Think about the top end, you think Kakadu, yeah. Australia's largest national park, wow. amazing environment, wildlife, oh, so good. Yeah, we've got some friends that were up here, I think almost 20 years ago, and they said Kakadu has to be on top of your list, and in particular, the Yellow Water Cruise. Yes. They said if if you want to get Kakadu in one experience, do that. So we've yep. hooked ourselves onto oh, that. I know, Sunset Cruise, I'm so excited awesome. about that. I mean, there is so much else for us and we've got a pretty jam-packed schedule. We're gonna try and get through it all. Uh, Waterfalls, amazing. the Aboriginal rock art out here is incredible. Jasperini, what are you looking forward to? I'm actually looking forward to seeing the crocodile. <laughs> yes. yes, from a Me distance. Uh, on the boat. On, on the, the boat, boat. okay. Safe, safe. <laughs> yeah, good point. I think there'll be more crocodiles up here than we've ever seen before. Yeah, they say that there's 120,000 crocodiles Amazing. at least up here in the top end. So I'm, I'm sure we're going to see a handful of them. Yes. There's the uh, the infamous Car Hill Causeway, which is known to be the most dangerous water crossing in Australia. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. We will <laughs> wave to you from the other side. If you don't want, know what we're talking about, Google Car Hills Crossing. Um, it's going to be awesome to go and see other people do it and watch the crocodiles as well. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, are you ready to do this? Yeah. Okay, well, we've got 300, well, 280 kilometers ahead of us, yep. three and a half hours drive time. Wales is fun. Yeah, we left a bit late, didn't we? <laughs> That's all right. A cup of tea along the way. Yes, there's actually, there's a few stops that we've been told about on the way out here. So we'll see how we're going. Otherwise we might do them on the way back in. Perfect. All right. Ready to do it, Jasper? Yep. Let's do it. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. The mama. Alrighty. How you doing? Very good, thank you. How was that experience? Great. Spoke to Olivia. Super friendly, really helpful. It looks excellent in here actually. And there's two, uh, there's a restaurant and a bistro mm -hmm. and a shop in here as well. Okay, we are on site 107. It's massive. So we are kind of in this area. We're gonna follow it around here. It's a ring road. All around here, dump points up there, and then we can enter the campground into here. So this is all other accommodation. 
into the campground she said you can kind of take whichever route you like but she said it might be easy just to come straight down here past the laundry and in here to 107 which is like just over there from where we are now yeah yeah we're going around <laughs> that but it's a one-way loop so but um bar and bistro restaurant reception and shop pool just for there's a pool and a playground awesome let's yeah. do it This is so exciting. Okay, yesterday was a pretty easy drive. Mm. I mean, it's fully tarred all the way. In fact, all of this area, even out to Arnhem Land border, is fully bitumen. Yeah, it's amazing. Makes mm. it so accessible. Yeah, it, absolutely. Pretty well anyone can come out here mm. and be a part of this environment. We are staying here at Kuinda. This is a very well laid out beautifully designed campground isn't it oh it sure is and makes mm. such a great base to be able to then get out further afield into yeah. Kakadu and explore um, they've got loads of accommodation styles here so whether you're mm -hmm. coming in your RV or not you can definitely come and stay here great powered unpowered sites green grass loads of trees so many shady trees Do you know what was so lovely it was last night it rained mm. <laughs> We haven't heard rain on the roof of the van for a very long time. Yeah. So it has really made everything look pretty vibrant. The day is going to be an absolute pearler. Mm. I think we're going to get a top of 36 by late this afternoon. Steamy. Yeah, it is going to be a wonderful day. Awesome. Okay, there's also safari tent style accommodation. There's apartment mm. style accommodation. There's some cabins as well that are all fully serviced great facilities and amenities. There's a laundry, of course, beautiful pool area that looks very, very inviting. And I can't wait to take Jasper up there. That looks fantastic. Mm. We've been tipped off that if you want to get up there, then you're best to go before lunch. Yes. Because as soon as everyone's had a good feed, you're hitting that top temperature and it just gets pretty packed. Yep. The camp kitchens here are pretty cool mm. as well. They're completely screened mm. in. So I think they've really thought of everything here. Yeah, and the other, I mean, the other great thing, if you are in your RV, is there is a dump point on site, which makes it yes. very handy. <laughs> All right, we have got an absolutely huge day ahead of us. Mm. Actually, the next two days, are pretty full. Mm. <laughs> you can also book all your tours from here, which is really great. Yep. And you can get chauffeured to those tours from here. Cool, so, yeah, awesome. It is a really fantastic location for yeah. that. Oh, and there's fuel as well yep. out the front, which again, just so handy. We will need to top up. So we'll check out the fuel prices and let you know about that mm -hmm. and the restaurants. Yes. Yes. So. We have read reviews that say that their food service here is number one in Kakadu. So we're, we're going to try both of those, see how we go time-wise tonight. We could be a bit stuffed, but we're definitely going to try and pick up lunch tonight. Yep. Awesome. All right. Kakadu. Okay, today is an absolute ripper of a day. 
we are about to see the crocodiles. How excited are you, Jasper? Um, really excited. Are you, are you nervous? <laughs> no. That's good. That's good. Fear is not the way, but respect is good. <laughs> okay, this is pretty cool. There are platforms that you can view the crocs from. You can drive across. Kate's not keen at all to do that. We have uh, left it so that we can come right towards high tide because that is when most of the action apparently is. There's about a, a five metre variance between low and high tide. So when the water comes in, it comes in and rises fairly quickly. Yeah. So you don't want to be stuck in the middle of the causeway. No, oh gosh, <laughs> no. No, and um, we've seen footage of vehicles that have been I guess washed off a little bit yeah. with the oh, gone. the tide. And yeah, then of course you just become lunch yeah. or dinner. Uh, there have been numerous fatalities out here because of people I think either getting complacent or not following the the signage that's everywhere that says, you know, don't fish from here and don't walk across the causeway. Anyway interestingly I read that there's about 150 crocodiles within this five six kilometer zone around the causeway which is very unusual for this apex predator because they are so territorial but because of that tide movement and because of the amount of fish that are, are coming through it's just a feeding frenzy so hopefully yeah. we get so they've to... all worked out this agreement where they're just like right we'll just yeah. be neighbors and live together because we're all well fed i'm sure there'll be a pecking order as Amazing. well we hopefully going to see a bit of action Fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Awesome. Kahoo. Car Hills Crossing. What do you reckon your chances are? Um, I'm meant to be going on Pelly, but don't look like I'm going on Pelly today. <laughs> I don't think so either. I mean, if you if you put it in a second and you just floored it from here, you might be all right. And I might come on the news also for <laughs> an idiot that's been sucked up by the river too. You certainly end up on YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you, mate. See ya. That was totally a wow moment. Yes, that's a yeah. little bit of an understatement, I think. It that was a wow yeah, moment. Yeah, that truly was incredible. Uh, for those of you who have been watching our show since day one, a couple of years back now, you would know that Katie and I met at Australia Zoo and we both worked with the Irwins uh, when Steve-O was still alive. But Kate, because she was Steve and Terry's personal assistant, used to get to travel with them and she got to go to a croc research trip to Lakefield National Park, jump crocs, mm. learn a lot. Amazing. How does this compare? Well, I think seeing a crocodile in the wild anywhere is amazing, yeah. but what sets this location apart is the amount of crocodiles. They just, they don't do this in the wild. These yeah. guys up here are hanging out together, that just, that's not a normal thing. So to see wow. so many, it was goosebump moment. It, it, and yeah. quite emotional too. I just couldn't believe it. Well, I think because they're an apex predator, they are so territorial. There's normally like one croc per 10 kilometers. Mm -hmm. How many did we just count, Jasper? We just counted 22. 22, 22. <laughs> right there at the causeway. Yeah. And the other thing that is amazing about this, for every croc you can see, they say there's 10 you can't. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's like watching, you know, when you see the bears smashing the salmon. Yes. It yep. was like that. Yep. At times I was just like, this is unbelievable. I mean, they're massive fish. Yeah. The guy said a lot of barramundi mostly, a couple of other species. There's some pretty big crocs out there. <sighs> yeah. There were some pretty big yeah. ones. Yeah. Just amazing. Um, I want to come back. Well, there's a lineup of cars there yeah. and there's a massive semi-trailer across the the causeway waiting to cross so yeah let's duck down here we've got to go and oh i see some of the rock art the rock art yeah 
we're going to do a bit of a hike, although it is incredibly it is hot. Of the day too. Mm. It's um, it's 34 degrees, so it's not our hottest day, but it is so humid. Mm. So anyway, but we will come back. Yeah, hopefully, let's do that. bring See you some cars crossing. Yeah. Oh God. All right, let's do it. Amazing. You good? Yep. It's warm. What a buzz. Unbelievable. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hello mate. Hello mate, how are you? What's your name? Joey. Joey, yeah. cool. You're local? Yeah, of course I am. Of course I am. Of course. <laughs> Where are you to you from man? I'm from Minon Pelly, so out here in East Alligator River and also into East Arnhem Land on that side. It's not that far. In here it's really 17 k to drive. Okay. Yes. Are you going to try and get across anytime uh, not, soon? Anytime soon. <laughs> it's going to wait, the water's kind of twisting and twisting. This means the water can stop. So as soon as when the water can stop, the water can go down to the downstream and then cross it over okay. by, the, by the car. So you're basically going to watch that water and when you see it through a certain direction, you know yep. it's okay? Yes, it is. Awesome, mate. No worries. Thank you, Joe. It's safe crossing, okay? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Oh, how good was that? Amazing. Okay, we have seen some incredible indigenous artwork mm -hmm. during our travels. Yeah. And when people ask us our favorite site, we always say Carnarvon, Carnarvon. Gorge, yeah. Central Queensland. The art gallery there, as it's famously known, is this 62 meter escarpment mm -hmm. with over a thousand pieces of artwork that are all etched or hand stencils. That is predominantly what is on that wall. Mm. Now that we've been to here, Uber. Uber, yeah. hopefully we're saying that right, that's in a whole nother level. Stencil art, it is truly incredible. It is, it is actually, it is regarded as one of the finest collections of artwork in the world. Yeah. And it's not until you're actually standing there, taking it in, that you really get that like wow moment when you really think mm. about how old this artwork is mm -hmm. and the intricate detail of it and a lot of this artwork and I think what sets this apart is that it's considered x-ray artwork so it's mm. paintings that show a lot of the bone structure and internal organs of the animals that the people who lived here thousands mm. of years ago were depicting turtles and goannas and I mean there's even a painting of the thylacine the yeah. Tasmanian tiger I think that was the most impressive <sighs> part of the storytelling is that you know the thylacines disappeared off the mainland of Australia around four to five thousand years give or take a few years apparently and they believe that was when the dingo was introduced through trading between East Asia and the Aboriginals mm -hmm. up in this part of Australia and they actually killed off the thylacine right. and then they only ended up on Tasmania because they believe Tasmania separated wow. and so then that's why they became known as the Tasmanian tiger but they've got artwork which is clearly a Tasmanian tiger. Yes and also mm. um, different artworks that depict interactions with the European people which is just so fascinating Amazing. it is incredible mm. oh, and the environment I mean yeah. wow do you know it's a kilometer loop and then you have this opportunity to walk up to a lookout 
and I think you could easily think, oh, okay, this is it. But there is actually, if you walk another 50, 100 meters along the sort of plateau, there's an even further lookout that's, mm -hmm. that's marked with these little orange markers. And you get up there and I had that overwhelming <laughs> goosebump moment <laughs> feeling where I said to Kate, okay, this is Kakadu. Mm -hmm. This is what we came here for. Yeah. I it mean, you, spectacular. you could think or picture like somewhere like the Serengeti. These vast wetland plains, vibrant green, mm -hmm. the clouds all rolling in. Mm -hmm. It was breathtaking. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, they say it takes generally an hour. We would suggest give yourself an hour and a half to two hours because mm -hmm. you don't want to rush, especially when you do get up to the lookout. You want to be able to be up there and take in that amazing view. So yeah. um, definitely give yourself some time. It is regarded as an easy walk mm -hmm. then the additional 250 meters that's steep to get up to the yeah. top there was wheelchair access uh yeah awesome. for all around the base to most of the artwork that's correct yeah, yeah. which is really great yeah. there's car park with uh, all of the amenities you'd hope for mm -hmm. some picnic tables all under shade yeah great for families oh mm. so good for families we mm. saw lots of them apparently it is a brilliant spot to take in the famous kakadu sunset wow mm -hmm. okay well, we just absolutely love that. Now, we've just stopped here at Border Store, mm. which is basically called that because it's on the border to Arnhem Land. And it's strange to be in Australia and think there's a border that, as an Australian, you can't actually access unless you have a permit mm. from the Arnhem Land people, So, which you can get. Yeah. And hopefully we will do that next time we're in this region because mm -hmm. that will be incredible mm -hmm. but at the border store here there is this really awesome art gallery it's also called Manbira Manbira uh, and you can get cold drinks in there shaded heaps of outdoor seating areas but it's worth a stop and checking out the art inside that gallery as well awesome all right we're gonna head back to Car Hills hopefully see some more croc action yeah and some game <laughs> people crossing I know how I feel Jasper how are you mate well, yeah, I actually want to cross too. You want oh, to cross get over? Out, there you go. Yeah. He's you did, Devil. Absolutely pooped. We took a couple of liters of water and we drank it all. So yeah, it was yeah, hot. Take plenty of water. Mm. All right, here we go. Car Bye. Hills Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> such an epic awesome day it's been a long day but a fantastic day in Kakadu night of cooking tonight we decided to come up to the Barra Bar and Bistro here at Coinda Lodge they also have Mimi's restaurant which I think we might come up tomorrow and Maybe, do a pizza yeah. lunch as well really give you the best of what they've got going on here the menu at the bistro looks fantastic infused with Australian bush tucker flavors. So I'm really excited to try our dinner tonight. And 
after our massive day, what do you think, Jasper? What was the best part of your day? Actually getting to see the crocodiles on Carl's Crossing. Yes. Yep. That was so my favourite too. Amazing. All right, are you hungry? Yeah. Are you tired? Yep. Yeah. Are you hot? Yes. Yeah, me too. What's happened, babe? Hey. What's happened? Let's just say that uh, <laughs> the corrugation has caused the bolt to come undone. I'm going to blame my uh, old mate at ARB for not tightening it up. Tight it up. So, anyway. Okay, that's good. So it's not broken? No. The one I put on's fine. Such a difficult spot to get to though, to tighten up. That's just gonna bounce undone again. I might just put a bit of gaff on it anyway. Okay. Okay, so we only got about 10 kilometers into Magook. Uh, there is a campground there. We've probably come in about a kilometer the road is very corrugated, so I'm going to drop the pressure down by about 10 psi, down to around about 30, 28, 30, uh, and I'll do the same all the way around, and that should make it a lot more comfortable. Um, you can see the uh, the aerial there for the UHF radio actually has come loose just from that vibration, so you can imagine how much vibration is actually going through the entire vehicle. So anyway. We'll get this sorted, hopefully more comfortable. Wife will be happier. special tool there, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my version. Do you want to check? Kakadu tyre deflator. Yeah. Hold that one. Check. See how I did. 31.5. Amazing. <laughs> Hopefully that's tightened up. Wait for old mate to go past. Okay, I get asked uh, this a little bit when we're doing tire pressures. How do you know what's best? I mean, watch YouTube videos, ask other travelers. When we were out at Cameron Corner, I actually asked the locals and mm. that's, you know, probably your best answer. The special tool I use, this is really a cheap version of some much more expensive um, tools that you can get, but it's battery operated. It has digital readout on different um, pr uh, pressure, uh, I guess, units that are used. It does have PSI, which is great. We started at 40.5 all the way around. I mean, the tires are hot. 
and we've dropped them all down to 31. Uh, so yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But look, generally speaking, 2830 on this sort of road is fine. When you get to sand, you're gonna be dropping them way back down there, 2018, 16, if it's really soft. So yeah, just ask locals, ask people who've gone ahead, or if yeah, you can get some other advice, that's generally the rule of thumb. Awesome. Yeah, and then just see how you go. Manage it as you go. Here we go, back on the road? Yeah. Happy? Yep. Good boy. Look at the size of that termite mound. <laughs> Twice the size of you, Jasper. Well, it's maybe about 13, twice the size of you too. Kate. Thirteen times. <laughs> thirteen times. It is absolutely chalk and cheese. The difference by taking roughly ten psi out of the tyres. We're now sitting on 55, 60 kilometres an hour. It is remarkably different, isn't it? Oh, amazing. Yeah, so yeah. worth it, worth the time. Yeah. And good to be uh, prepared and make sure that you're actually carrying an air compressor with you so that you can reverse this operation before you get back out on the tarp. Okay, let's do it. Our aerial, on the other hand, not so happy. Ready. Let's do it. I know it looks like Katie's got everything. That's what it looks like. But my bag's much heavier because it's full of camera gear. Sharing. Okay, the, it is true. Sharing the load. Thanks, honey. We got onto these through Paul's brother Jeff and you can just pick them up at your kitchenware shop but they're great for like dry goods we've got trail mix in one they're great for liquids as well good for you good for the environment awesome for hiking mm. awesome they come in for mango. different sizes oh they do yeah we've got some little ones as well it's called scullery scullery how do you spell it s-c-u-l-l-e-r-y good stuff jasper how are you going Magook Falls, also known as Barramundi Falls, was everything that you would imagine the Northern Territory to be about. Spectacular scenery, this incredibly tropical environment with the rainforest. Mm. I didn't think anything could beat Edith Falls for how naturally mm. stunning that was. And then we came here. Yeah, that is so true. Look, the, the bottom pool is incredible. It's one hour return. I think it's two kilometers 
very easy mm. to get to. Bit of rock hopping. <laughs> Definitely, and the rocks can be a little bit slippery underfoot. If you've had of a ever had an injury on any of your ankles or anything wear a brace yeah. i can definitely recommend that and then of course we we heard about the the hidden real jewel in the crown here and that is the upper pools with the absolutely crystal clear water dive through swimming holes archway at one end smaller waterfalls hardly any people because mm. it it is actually off the the walkway and the guided track yeah. so you yeah, enter at your own risk it certainly was moderate to difficult i would say the walk i mean we did it with jasper yeah. uh, and holding his hand the whole way but quite incredible this place is i think our favorite natural waterfall swimming hole walk that we have done today all around we would have covered about five k's yes yeah, so awesome, awesome exercise. <laughs> yeah. The water temperature was perfect. perfect. I got in, so that's yeah. saying something. I mean, we're hitting 36 degrees right now, and so that temperature to be in that sort of 24 degrees Celsius, it is just the absolute reward when you get to the end of that walk. Amazing. Wowzers, okay. Uh, McGook. McGook, Barramundi, love it. Okay, we've just come back on that. It's about 10 kilometers of corrugated road into Barramundi Falls or Magook. And coming back out, I'm gonna put the air back around in the tires. Just a couple of really good tips here uh, that I would refer to as my worst rookie mistakes that I've made so far. And that is to make sure that you let the system cool down before you move the hose coupling at the end because I absolutely scalded and burnt my fingertips the first time I did this. It was also the last time I did it, as my dad says, better to learn from someone else's mistakes. Another really good tip is to get yourself a little bit of green foam like that one down there. That's a, a nice little knee sa saver, particularly when you're getting to my ripe old age. All right, that's it, let's do it. We'll get this done. It'll take us probably about three, four minutes to tire. So it's, it's pretty quick, you know, 15 minutes and you're done and then just use your little device. By the way, I picked this up at super cheap auto. And honestly, I think it was five bucks. So they're cheap and they're a great tool. And you can use that end to deflate. That is also a, um, a way for you to break your window. If you're in a car accident and you can't get out, that will shatter the window. And that bit there will actually cut the seat belt. So it's actually a really nifty tool. It's even got a light. Cool, five bucks. Jack and 
do. This has been the most amazing whirlwind tour yes. for us. Uh, look, really all told, two and a half days, mm. probably about four or five days too short. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could come out and spend a month here and not see it all. It is absolutely incredible. It is so accessible. That's what's yes. blown me away. And everything's open. So mm -hmm. whatever you need to do to plan your trip to get here, it is an absolute must. We've just finished at the Bawala Visitor Centre. It's about two kilometres from Jabiru, about 50 odd k's down the road to Kwinda where we've been staying. This is probably the first stop. Yeah, it'd be a great place yeah. to come. It gives you the lay of the land and mm. shows you what you can expect in Kakadu. And also you can pick up, you know, the, all the information that mm. you need. So the park maps and safety information. You can actually buy your park pass mm -hmm. here as well. Great point. We did buy it online just using our mobiles. But if you've forgotten to do that, make sure you stop in here. The mm -hmm. staff are super friendly. Yeah. And as you said, there's loads of information that you can get your hands on for free. Mm. Talk about a beautifully displayed visitor center that is almost like a museum with the exhibit that mm. you can walk through. Jasper, I don't know how many times he said, oh, oh this is wow. amazing. Yeah, and I think we've said it many times as we've traveled up the Explorer Way to get to the Northern Territory, they are outstanding here. As far as parks and wildlife, in their interpretation, their storytelling, the mm -hmm. expression through the interactive displays, it's not only good for us, like we're, we're all learning. There is the right height, signage and buttons to press for Jasper, you know, for the younger ones. So yeah. everyone is engaged yeah. and captured the whole time. If you want to really take your time, read the inter, read the stories and, and get a better understanding before you head out to Kakadu, allow yourself at least an hour, 45 mm -hmm. minutes if you're, if you're rushed for time, but an hour and you should be able to really experience and the kids will stay engaged the whole time. Yeah, great point. Mm. There is also another cultural centre right down near Kuwinda where mm. we were staying, which again tells lots of stories about the local Aboriginal people, the traditional owners, mm. and you can go and catch some of the women doing weaving demonstrations uh, throughout the day as well. So we didn't get to stop in yeah. there, but that would be a must for your itinerary too. Oh, to be able to capture that ancient you know, mm -hmm. skills yeah. actually and, and get to experience that, I think would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take you back to last night because that was really how we wrapped up our time at mm. Kawinda and that was the Yellow Water Cruises. It's, yeah. This was fantastic. If you're looking for a paid experience, mm. I think, particularly if you're a bird lover, I mean, we, we've said that Kakadu National Park is the largest national park here in Australia. Mm -hmm. It covers almost 20,000 square kilometres. Yeah. It has a third of Australia's bird species and it is about a third of the size of Tasmania. Amazing. It is huge. To, I mean to yeah. say that this place is special is an understatement. Yeah, 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 nicely said. If you are a bird lover then this tour is right up your alley. You can see I think 60 of the species that are here in Kakadu on this bird tour. For us what I really loved was being able to finish our time here in Kakadu sitting in this boat that was open air mm. cruising this waterway through this spectacular environment i think that's it it is regarded as the best wetland area in kakadu so to be actually in kakadu mm. by being on this boat is an awesome way to experience it and it's an awesome way to relax and really be immersed in this pristine environment. Yeah. I mean, the bird life is outstanding. Mm -hmm. We met some bird twitches the other day at another, uh, it was actually a bird hide. Yes, at the wetlands. Oh my gosh, that is also an area to put on your radar if you're coming out here. And they had experienced the morning tour, the mm -hmm. sunrise tour. And they had said that, well, if you're really a bird lover, yeah. the morning sunrise tour might be the better of the two. Yeah, we did this sunset tour and they operate cruises all throughout the day. A good tip mm. if you want to get a sunrise or a sunset cruise, definitely book in advance because yeah. they are extremely popular. It was so beautiful seeing the wildlife. We saw plenty of crocs. We also got to experience mm. some of the feral species that mm -hmm. call Kakadu home, like the buffalo, the longhorned cattle, and also some 
beautiful brumbies that were just grazing on the floodplains. Mm. Look, there is so much wildlife mm. here. Uh, for us, the highlights would have to be Car Hills Crossing. If you, if you really want to see the incredible crocodiles in their natural environment, mm -hmm. jostling for their food, mm -hmm. jostling for their space, that is the place to go. Yeah, it was exciting. It really it? was, yeah. yeah. Uber, the rock yeah. art. There is so much rock art mm. up here in Kakadu. I don't think you could ever see it all. And we have a few sites on our next return yeah. visit wish list. There's apparently over 5,000 different locations of Aboriginal rock art, some dating back 20,000 mm. years, they believe, and even depicting interaction with the Dutch ships yep. that were Amazing. coming here hundreds of years ago. So, look, it is truly a remarkable experience. The entire time that we have been here, mm -hmm. all we've really felt is that we wish we had longer. Yeah. Yeah, an incredible, incredible place. Look, I think this will be somewhere that we come back to experience the different seasons as well. Mm. I so want to come back to see the wet, they call it the green, to do a scenic flight and see those waterfalls just bursting with water I think would be amazing as well. Absolutely awesome. All right, for us now it's back to Darwin to get the van in, get some work going there. We've also got some pretty cool stuff happening to the Hilux in the next week or two as well before we make our way out of Darwin. All right, for now, dream big, look after yourself, look after your family. And happy trails. We have just ticked off two years full-time travel around Australia and to celebrate, we are giving away the ultimate fair good prize pack valued over $6,000. The prize includes a $2,500 motorhome holiday thanks to our great mates at Apollo plus your choice of $2,000 worth of the best four-wheel drive accessories and equipment thanks to our friends at MSA 4x4. And to capture all of your amazing adventures, we're throwing in the latest, greatest GoPro 9 Plus accessories and a swag of other must-have caravan and camping products, including a ground dogs awning anchor kit, a flat out water hose kit, tidy turf mats pack, and a freshly squeezed water co drinking filter. Everything you need to keep you feeling good on the road. Yes, this truly is the ultimate feel good prize pack. Okay, now two super easy steps to enter. Number one, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and click that little bell for notifications on when our episodes go live. And two, enter your details on the competition page at our website, all the W's, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. It's that easy. You've got to be in it to win it. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails.
not a chance I would ever do anything like that. That was unbelievable. Yes, I would do that. Well, would you? From you, a kid. you would do that? Yes, I would. What? From, well, from up there on that <laughs> Yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not ideal, is it? Losing one thong is bad enough, but losing a thong with a key on it. Okay. What? <laughs> the khaki. Oh, Hopefully dear. not the khaki. All right, you lead the way, mate. Let's go. Let's go this way. Oh, right. That's a great idea. Follow the path, remember? Hey, what do you call that? The funny walk. <laughs> <laughs> with a government grant, you can make that a lot funnier. Right, off he goes. Freaking out up here, we're freaking out.